And if you don't have a stir stick, you can always use your glasses. I'm the Haxman, and today I'm gonna to show you how to stain a fence like a pro. Well, like a pro. No. No, no. Guys, today I have with me Mark from SWI Fence again. Mark, last time I had to put up with you, uh, <laughs> Freudian slip. Last time I had the pleasure of you being here, we put up a no dig fence, a six foot privacy fence today. What are we doing today? Today, just like last time, I'm gonna do most of the work and you're gonna talk. Is that, is that? And for that, because I know that you have trouble, for that I brought some special talent. I watched a movie with Huckleberry Finn. I know how this goes. And for this project, we will be using Wood Defender Fence Stain. Mark, tell us what makes Wood Defender so fantastic. What makes Wood Defender stand out amongst its peers is how easy it applies. It's easy to apply, it's easy to clean up. And as you'll see today, there's no back brushing or no back rolling to get it to blend really well. Um, and we'll show you what makes that unique. If you ever get those little lines and stuff and you're doing stain because you left it on there a little bit too long and it just doesn't look right and it'll leave a line, we'll show you that that's not a problem with this product. Awesome. Super easy to apply. I don't do anything that's hard. You should know that by now. We're going to have to wear Tyvek suits to do this. I guess you don't have to, but we're going to do it because you don't like to get dirty. Yeah, I don't like to get dirty, and we do have the YouTube OSHA crowd that will probably beat us up okay. if we don't. So we're gonna we're gonna lose 15 15 ish pounds Easy. today. I okay. already feel it. It's right. It's yeah. right down my back. I'm not even gonna. It's bad. I could stand to lose a good five or ten. Yeah, I could do. 20, 25 for you probably. Yeah, pretty. Yeah. Easy. Okay. All right. Cool. So one of the most important parts is to make sure that we get all of the color stirred up. It's very, very important. All of that color needs to make it into the thing. All the See, solids. we did. Yep, all the solids. Up, oh, back. Ooh. Sheesh. Why are my hands so hot? So much grow. Okay. Next. I'm going to die a heat stroke, but I'm going to die safe. What's this guy? <laughs> okay. I've got the sprayer where I'm going to spray the top of the fence. He's going to spray the side of the fence. Now, obviously, you can get these sprayers at your local hardware store. And we'll go more into where you can get wood defender and all that in just a minute. But let's We're get using two different types. I've heard it said that these cobalt, oh, holy cow, this is awful. <sighs> is this good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready to stain a fence or rob a bank. Yeah. Either one. Or make little delicious chocolate candies. Yeah. I'm using the cobalt sprayer, and the nice thing about this is I won't have to pump it up. You're gonna have to pump yours up, but this is a proven system. So this is basically, we're gonna try two different systems, but this is to show that you can apply the stain with a simple backpack sprayer. This is just the one Wood Defender really likes. This is one we're trying because it's battery operated and I don't have to pump it up, so. Because you're lazier. And I, because I am lazier, yes. Less work. Oh, hang on, twirl. <laughs> And so you just wrote all this out here to prove that when we get done staining this, you won't be able to see that. Even though that will have sat for like 10 minutes before. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah easily. Good. What we want to do is we want to coat it at about 125 to 150 square feet per gallon, which is going to be very heavy. So this is basically the way we want to be putting this on. And you can see it's almost dripping down the fence. And I didn't get this over here. Better to be too heavy than too light, you're saying? Yeah, you'll almost see it dripping down the fence. And if we miss a spot, no big deal, we can come back. But you don't want to go too light. You don't want to, you don't want to do this. Just nice and heavy. Like I say, you want to do up 125 to 150 square feet per gallon is what we should be getting. 
So the nice thing about this is it penetrates into the wood rather than sitting right on the top. And the benefit of that is it won't chip or peel or crack off the top like so many of the other stains that you see. But you can see how fast this goes. This isn't taking us any time. Uh, and if I act, if I just soak it in here, you're not going to be able to tell that spot. It's self-leveling, so I'll be, you won't be able to tell this spot from over here where I did it correctly. So there's no runs, no no problems there, which really makes it user-friendly. So an idiot could do this. An idiot could do uh, That's what I'm counting on, Yeah, actually. we're going to prove it today. Yes, okay. I'm counting on that. So you're trying to coat the top of the picket and the board. You don't want to spray over here because uh, you're just wasting the bunch. Awesome. You want to be over here and kind of coat the top of the picket plus the top. Oh, awesome. You're catching on. <laughs> it takes a while. Okay, you got this? I'm on it. What's this down here? What is that? That is uh... What is that? Somebody, uh, somebody has defaced part of your fence but made the other part of it amazing. It was it's really pretty crazy, before. Right? I had yeah. worked really hard on my grass. What's going to happen to my grass? Um, well, what's going to happen to your grass is it'll keep growing as long as you keep watering it. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's good to know. If you don't want it, if you don't want it, don't water it. But this isn't really going to have an impact long term on it. Long term. Short so, term. Short term. It will. It, it will affect the phonodesis. Yeah. You're good. You're good with your vocabulary. Let's address some of the questions while we let this dry. This thing is. This backpack is heavy. Are Mine's not as heavy. I sprayed more than you did, though. Oh. I wasn't screwing around. Let's talk about our fence here, uh -huh. because we had a lot of questions. Some people. I mean, oh I, my gosh! I had no idea. I have spray all over my glasses. You're gonna owe me a new set. Actually, the other nice thing is, is that if it's a non-porous surface like this, it will not dry. I'll be able to wipe this right off. And oh, really? Holy smoke! We'll just let that dry there for a little bit. We'll come back at the end. And did you see what he just did there? Those are nice glasses too. I Get really a close like up those. Of those glasses. Show I those hope, glasses. I hope those. I hope that comes out. You're hoping that you're right. I hope I'm right. So the, you you said you wanted to talk about something else. Yeah, yeah. I, anyway, I mean, enough about you. A lot of people were asking. I mean, for one thing, I was shocked at how many fence experts there are on YouTube. And I mean, they really there really are a lot of them. A lot of people that know more than you, in fact. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah, I mean, they commented on but the video. But I'll admit it. I'll admit it. Yeah, they commented on the video about how little you knew. Uh -huh. um, let's talk about, like, wind. How will this fence, this no-dig fence that we put in, how will it hold up in wind? I have no idea. Believe it or not, there's people that design this stuff in their labs, like professional people smarter than me, like numbers and numbers and words Such and things. Such a person exists. Yeah, they exist. They, I think they call them engineers. Mm -hmm. And so these are engineered for wind. Like okay. It's like they almost thought that they might be in places like Wyoming and Florida where there are things like hurricanes and high winds in the winter. Interesting. Somebody thought of that. Interesting. Now, these the posts that we drove into the ground are galvanized. And a lot of people said you can't put a galvanized post in the ground. Uh-huh. If what we can't put that? a galvanized post in the ground, we have some serious trouble with some bridges and other structures that are sitting upon non-galvanized products. Okay. Because they use they use steel, believe it or not, for pilings and to support buildings. There's a thing called a helical pier that you screw into the ground that's galvanized. And so if if this fin fence isn't gonna stand up because we pounded these into the ground, then those things are definitely doomed. Like people's decks and stuff are supported by these structures. So believe it or not, fence posts were not the first thing to be inserted into the ground. So again, you're saying the engineers, you think they know what they're doing. I, I'm, I'm hopeful. Okay, I'm hopeful. Um, spacing. A lot of people asked about spacing because we just push these right up against each other. And I think I know what your answer is because if you'll come look, this is what happens as the pickets dried. You can see we've got a gap between every one of them. So had we left a gap, we'd have a huge gap. It would somehow have gotten even bigger. And but no, this is perfect because we did want to play peekaboo yeah. with the neighbors. Exactly. That was, you specifically requested that. Like I did. I, when this dries, I want to be able to see very small slivers of my neighbor, but that's it. It's kind of like a bathroom stall in a Walmart. It is. Horizontal fences. Can you do a horizontal fence using? Oh yeah, absolutely. We do it all the time. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page or even our Google profile, you'll be able to see all of the type of fences. And our company has not installed a wood fence on a wood post in probably about 12 years. Hmm. We just made the conscious decision about 12 years ago 
that because of things like wind breaking the post, rot eating the post, and all the other problems associated with wood warping, we'd put posts in and they'd look like a banana after a day. Huh. So because of all those problems, we said, you know what, we're done with wood, we're going to steel. And since then we have had nothing but beautiful straight fences. And all of those have not fallen down. Um, actually, the converse of that is true. Almost all of them have fallen down and it's because we like to make money, we install stuff like this because I want to be back. My goal is not to sell you one fence every 10 years, but to sell you a new fence every year. I see. So you really so, do have the engineer mentality. I, I'm truly a you gotta go thought for voting. Yes. You're in the wrong business, bro. You should be in appliances. What about vinyl fences? Can you use vinyl fences with the uh, Postmaster posts? No. So if you want to drive your posts, which let me say on the record again, that believe it or not, not all conditions are like here in Georgia and they're not like Wyoming and different conditions exist in different parts of the country. So what works here may not work where you're at. So you're saying if you got rocks, because we had a lot of questions about So rocks. if you have small rocks and you have like a gravelly soil. Show them how big that rock oh, is. Oh, sm small, small rocks. If you have gravelly soil, it may work. What you wanna see for success, and if you have a question about whether or not it's gonna work, you need to go do a test. So pound one is a test and see how solid it is. If you can pull it right back out, it's no good. Holy cow, I am like, what is wrong with your climate? It's actually 120% today, the humidity. Can you get 120%? I always give it 120%. What was I talking about? I have no idea, I wasn't paying attention. Oh yeah, so you can't do a vinyl fence on these posts, but we have a video on our channel, SWI Fence, where we do a no-dig vinyl fence, and we have a system for that. So if you do live in an area where you drive the post in, you test drive a post, and it's nice and solid, you can't pull it out, and you can basically pull on it really hard, and you don't see the ground giving away and being able to pull it out very easily like we did down here. Mm -hmm. Look, oh, they're hard at work. Oh, wow, they don't know their turns guys. coming up. <laughs> if you run your test, you can do the vinyl fence on a round post and we have adapters. So go check out that video on SWI Fence's YouTube channel where we have the no dig vinyl fence and tell more about the no dig cedar fence. And you'll see how we do that with vinyl. So to answer your question, yes. You can do a vinyl fence without digging a hole as well. Yeah, I'm getting it. That, it looks good. So you could do this with a brush, and in fact, if you're really close to a house, you probably want to uh, basically hand brush maybe four or five or six pickets right up by the house and then spray from there. The key is, is when you're doing this, anytime you're close to something you don't want to get spray on or you want to be able to clean up, is to use uh, soapy water. If it's a non or if it's a porous material such as the stucco on the houses here, or you can just use regular water and then keep it wet while you're spraying by it. And as soon as it's done, you can come back and spray it off with water and clean it off. So just easy water cleanup. However, if you don't use water or if you're really worried about it, soapy water, um, you can get the stain on there and it'll stick. Uh, if it's a porous material such as brick, stucco, concrete, different uh, another wood for another fence or something. So those are things to think about. I do want to point out guys that you don't actually have to have like a Tyvek suit and everything to do this. You can just wear some old dirty clothes. It's good to have a mask and you might want to wear safety glasses, but not totally necessary. Especially if you've got child labor that can finish the job for you. test your glasses. What do you mean testing? I mean let's see. Like it's not bad enough? Oh! Oh! And if you don't have a stir stick you can always use your glasses. That's what I like to do. It's very very good. You want to get all of the color all the way out of the bottom as well. That is and that's what we're trying to do. Dedication to your art and trust in the product right there. Are you gonna let them dry like that? Yeah, well, we told them we wouldn't clean them until the end. Oh, till Are the we end. Done? Okay, my bad. To the end. To the okay. end. Oh, this guy. Got a lot of sass. Let's put them on the. Let's put them on the black he, so they can really bake. He is fasty. He's fasty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to make right there? Pretend you're a fireman. This is how we do things in the airplane. Now pull your strap. So clean over. Okay. Is that better?
So let's talk real quick about the Cobalt 40 volt electric sprayer versus the pump steel sprayer. What are your thoughts? You know, somebody told me, or a wood defender told me, this is the one they've been using for a long time and they really believe in it. But they said somebody had tried one of those. And while I really like the wand that they provide with the steel, and this is one that Wood Defender actually has because it's got a tip that goes up and down making uh, angles a little bit easier. But if I could put this wand on that sprayer, I think that would be the ideal setup. Yeah, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal to have to, to pump it until I wore more than, until I used this one. And this one was much easier. But like you said, the, the nozzle on that one's much better than what comes on the cover. I would say they're both a little bit uncomfortable, but I like the backpack here. This one has a waist strap, which is really nice. Um, it just felt like it fit better, even though neither one of them were like crazy comfortable. That one was the most comfortable because I get some of the weight off of my hips. Not to mention this one, I think, only holds four gallons and this one's a five gallon sprayer. If you wanted to, you could run down to Harbor Freight and pick up a pump backpack sprayer for 20 bucks. You know, I don't know how well it would hold up, but for one job, which is kind of typical for Harbor Freight. Yeah, single, single use. Yeah. Well, the fence has been sitting here for about an hour and a half on this particular spot and uh, you want to show them what we can do here? Yeah, that's just one of the things people are always worried about is well, what if it rains afterwards? So you can see it's beating up. We have no water pressure, but you won't wash it off now. It's beating up and doing exactly what it should do. So, noise. The other thing we have to do is I have these are kind of messy. Oh, bro, your lens. Yeah, so the secret to cleaning this up is most of the color will wash off right away. A little bit of oil residue that's left. So it just won't dry to anything. Hmm. So a little bit of residue that's less, soap and water. So I'll just get some Dawn dish soap. So it has to be able to be absorbed. It has to be able to be absorbed to stick. So that's why on porous surfaces like concrete, stucco, brick, you have to be careful and water those down. But on non-porous surfaces like glasses, it'll just wash right off. And soap and water, that's it. So the metal post behind here, if we really wanted to go back and clean all those metal posts, all we'd have to do is take a little bit of soap and water and rag and wipe those down. If you're thinking this is fun and easy and you'll just go ahead and do this yourself, that's totally doable. However, as Adam found out, it's not a lot of fun, especially in the heat and it's kind of messy. And so if that's not your thing, don't be afraid to find a professional. Can you even hear me? I was just thinking, can you hear me over his shoes? Or his shoes too loud for you to be able to hear me? I actually stole that joke from a viewer. You didn't you didn't complain too much this time about the heat. Proud of you. I did. A little better. You're getting a little bit more accumulated to it. Now accumulated. That you're just... Accumulated? Acclimated. Like more. Just shut your It's like my wife, she wants to get some uh, Adrianic chairs. Like you get <laughs> I believe the word you're looking for is Adirondack. <laughs> now she's gonna watch this and get all mad at it. We're leaving that in the video. The fence is dry now and it looks amazing. I love this color because it looks kind of like how it would naturally age. All right guys, uh, be sure to go check out Mark's channel, SWI Fence, and if they want any information about Wood Defender, they can contact your company. Yeah, absolutely. Well. We sell it on the website, so we'll put a link in this video yep. to the wood defender we sell and absolutely happy to help you out see ya